Hey, hey guys, this is the Magnificent One speaking today on a topic that is quite the opposite of my handle, which is not magnificent at all. What I want to talk to you today is essentially crowdfunding, and there's a lot of videos out there that offer tips and inside kind of strategies people can use to have a successful crowdfunding. I am uh, actually going to do the opposite. I um, I'm not somebody who successfully crowdfunded. In fact, I spent about two years trying to develop an audience in the incorrect manner, and I'll talk talk a little bit about that too. But um, yeah, I failed. I had a, a terribly, terribly failing crowdfunding campaign. Didn't even make a sixth of what I intended to, and my goals weren't high. You know, some people have fifty thousand dollar goals. Mine was couple of uh, it was 1200 bucks basically right <clears throat> i got 200 dollars. had a couple of people who backed me appreciated of them and i will fulfill to get them what they need to do but um yeah so i'm gonna offer you kind of the mistakes i made as you look back it's it's probably much more helpful lesson to learn from failure than it is from success sometimes right and so instead of me just throwing a hissy fit or anything like that. I'm, I'm not really upset, but I think there's some things that some people could um, find useful from this. So it may be a bit of a long video, but listen to it at two and a half times speed if you want to and draw from it what you need, right? So these are seven or eight things that I found that they it hurt me, right? Um, hurt my ability to get where I needed to be. So the first one is the platform that you do your marketing and where you build an audience matters tremendously. I spent two years building up an Instagram to over 10,000 people. You know, I did everything that was kind of given as, as far as advice, fitting out pictures on a daily basis, if not a weekly basis, doing stories, trying to connect with audiences, and it was successful. I, I hit... A ten thousand dollar mark, and that was my goal was to launch my campaign after I had ten thousand followers. And what I will say is this: Instagram is not the place, in my opinion, to source crowdfunding. Um, Twitter and YouTube is. When it comes to Instagram, I got a lot of business in um, doing commissions, so drawings for people. And what I realized is that is a platform where people are very self-interested. If you think about it, pretty much everybody on Instagram are posting their own pictures, their own stories, their own information, and they do follow other people, but it's a very self-projected type of platform. And the interaction is less than it is on YouTube and Twitter, but there's a lot of content put out by individuals. So people are interested in things which are self-projected, right? And to ask people to come join a, a campaign to crowd your comic book, I, I the same people who'd pay me $1,000 to draw them a picture would not pay $15 to get a comic book because it, it does not involve them. And so it's just the incorrect platform. You know, I was thinking that between presenting artwork, direct messaging, and constantly showing the product, it would create interest, but people have self-directed interest in there. And you cannot create what I would refer to as like a tribe, like you can on YouTube, or even on Twitter, just because it's just there as a, uh, you're basically broadcasting pictures but the interaction is, you know, you have some comments, you have some direct messages, but man, it is not great. And, you know, other people may have a different experience, but I think that's just the sum total of my experience. I had thought it would be a good place because I've known people who successfully campaigned uh, businesses, doing other businesses, not comic books, not crowdfunding, by kind of spamming people through direct messaging. And... That didn't work for me. Just didn't get a response rate. You know, I figured 10,000 people. My goal was thinking I'd get 100 backers. I got zero, literally zero backers that came from the Instagram platform. So in a way, it's, it's neat. I still, I, I, I've kind of given up on Instagram now. It, so my 10,000 followers has probably dropped down to like 9,800 or something. But um, <clears throat> it was not as valuable as I thought it was. So I wish I had actually put... 
effort into, uh, you know, maybe building up a YouTube or something like that, right? Um, so the second thing I want to talk about is, this was a mistake I made too, is Indiegogo does not give you a lot of organic traffic. What I mean by that is, um, I thought that people would go on in, in Indiegogo and explore, kind of go and see, hey, what other comics are out there? Maybe I'll find something. Maybe somebody will at least see my campaign, see the video, see the artwork, and be interested. When you look, actually look at the data, uh, virtually zero. Nobody actually clicks through. Nobody looks at it. And then when I looked at it myself, what I realized, literally the day I launched the campaign, I checked on it one hour afterwards. And in order to find my campaign, I had to hit the see more button. So uh, Indigo is going to show you like, I don't know, like 16 campaigns or 12 campaigns at a time. And then you have to hit see more to see others. I had to hit it 16 times before my campaign appeared. So I realized that, you know, the average person that's going to hit see more 16 times, they'll hit it maybe five. And that's probably under 10%. So there's a lot of work just to see your actual campaign on the site, unless you are um, what they call trending, which is what the bigger campaign is going to do, right? So you definitely have to focus on directing traffic to your page. And I think that's something else that um, I thought Instagram would do because when you have 10,000, you can do the whole swipe up link to the stories. Um, people just don't swipe anymore. They've been inundated with all kinds of advertising and stuff like that. So uh, it just <clears throat> was not necessarily uh, working out my way. So number three is, yeah, people, I, I truly believe this now, care more about the campaigner, not the campaign itself. I put a lot of artwork out. I told a lot of tips, a lot of advice, videos, pictures, and that stuff. But I've never expressed anything about myself. And I, I have not developed a personal relationship with an audience. So people, I think, are a lot more interested in who has actually created the story, you know, what, what, who's part of the tribe, who are they supporting rather than the actual story itself. Because whatever I do, it's probably not going to be mind blowing compared to what's available for somebody who's looking for great artwork. Right. And even though I think I have a badass story, I can't tell you the story unless you read it. And with that, it's, it's difficult to share an experience with people if they don't care about you in particular. So it's important that you actually have some authentic connection with, with the audience, right? So just something to keep in mind. And um, yeah, so that's uh, that's probably an important part as, as to why you people would be willing to kind of plop down their money to help you out right so uh, the next thing is when you actually do it do a campaign sometimes it's it's easier just to do the the campaign before creating so my, the book I've created is virtually done I I was telling people I had 22 pages I actually have pretty much the book done it's just I have 22 pages essentially finished right so um, it's a 40 page book which ends up being uh, actually about 56 pages with some of the extra pages and the extra stuff that I had in there. That was uh, probably a, a big waste of time if I think about it, right? Because there's no demand for it. So I created this great product, but nobody, uh, nobody is going to buy it. So now what happens? It's just going to sit in the shelf somewhere, right? So without a customer base, without an interest, Run the campaign first, man. See if you have interest because if, if nobody's interested, you can just refund people and say, okay, there was an interest. Don't care, you know, um, because I could have just as easily spent my time watching, I don't know, reruns of the A-Team or watching skinny-waisted, big-breasted girls on the inter internet or something, but um, would have had the exact same outcome, right? So a campaign is, is really a, a test of the audience and it's, it's a way to test the market and I, I miss that fact. And this is this is a very self-centered ego, uh, ego, right? Where you think, hey, what I'm gonna do is gonna be great, people will be interested. Yeah, they're not. You get you gotta have a market first, right? The other thing is too is, this is another lesson, this is more of a mentality thing, is you're a creator second. What you are first is a marketer. And you need to embrace this edict. I did not 
you should do this before you actually start the journey because like I said I was under the impression that a good product and 10,000 active followers would result in at least me hitting my goals but it's, it's not the case I should have spent a year just building a marketing base first or maybe five years before I even tried to put a campaign together also means I, I could have done other stuff um, maybe collaborated with other cre uh, creators you know, Comicsgate has a really big community of crowdfunded creators, and they do a great job kind of collaborating with each other. It was a little difficult because as soon as I launched my campaign, I had, uh, you know, unfortunately my wife was um, got sick, and there was a, another family emergency, so I didn't have virtually any time during that point. But what I should have done is if I could do it again I would have done a lot more create uh, collaboration with other people because what I, I did instead was I was uh, I was relying on my own and you know there's a balance there because you want to have your own mechanism you want to have your own audience your own tribe to market but at the same time this is probably something that you need to lean on others just a little bit sometimes just to get your name out there and again if this was an instagram thing yeah i'm like i get a big group of people i get ten thousand people um but on youtube i have like i don't know five subscribers or something like that um i love you i love you all my subscribers but when i'm averaging maybe five or six views a video i gotta lean on other people right i gotta get my name out there so that does uh does mean that you've got to uh, collaborate with other people basically uh, the other thing is um and this kind of comes back to the other thing is it's good to have a video on your campaign and it i do believe that helps but i don't think it does magic right i think traffic traffic is the, the best thing i've i had two campaign videos i put together and i wouldn't get a lot of views on them but it it was nice However, it's a beautiful exercise in novelty because uh, nobody's watching them. The other thing is I probably should have made them shorter. My videos, I think I, one of them is two minutes long. The other one is a little over one minute. With the attention span of people, they just want to see everything in like 15 to 30 seconds. I I think probably should be narrowed to that 15 and 30 seconds actually now that I think about it. So uh, something else. The other thing is too is... Because I was doing a black and white book, I don't think it's visually going to stand out. So when you're scrolling through the Indiegogo uh, page, black and white just disappears, right? You don't even notice it. So I would say uh, probably my final big piece of advice, do a color book. Don't do black and white. Even if you want it to be a black and white book, uh, the reason being is it doesn't pop. It, it just doesn't pop in the screen, right? You scroll through different things and it just doesn't pop. And if you want to do a black and white book, great. Do, sell version A, which is color, and version B, which is black and white. Because uh, I've noticed too, whenever I scroll through any campaigns and Kickstarter or Indiegogo, I virtually go right by the black and white ones. Because And, and I tested it. After I, I was realizing I wasn't getting a lot of views, <clears throat> I started scrolling through some of these and I was like, wait, there are no no black and white campaigns. Am I the only one? And I realized there are. You just something to do with the eye, man. When you're scrolling through it, kind of a uh, you know half-ass thinking and at a decent pace, you just you go right by them. You don't even come close to seeing them like you would a colored piece of artwork, right? So that's kind of the insight I had. Um, I you know, guys, this is valuable because you you want to know. You want to hear from people who failed as well as from people who are successful, right? And I know that's probably not, doesn't apply in a lot of different areas, but I will let you know that this is not easy to do. It's probably simple, but it's not easy. What I mean by that, there's no, nothing rocket science about this, but at the same time, man, you got to put the work in and the the product creating the comic that's the easy stuff man i i gotta tell you, that's the the easiest stuff in the world but the hard stuff is all the other things it's building an audience building a tribe doing all that stuff so i mean going forward i guess what i will do you know maybe i'll spend the next two to three years focusing on youtube 
probably not Twitter. I just I, I have a small following in Twitter, but I just not not the platform for me, man. It just seems like <clears throat> that's that's a platform for people who really really like drama. And that's not me, but I think YouTube. Maybe in the next five years, I can end up at like a thousand subscribers or something, <laughs> and then maybe I can have enough to do another small campaign or something. Till then, I'll keep drawing. I'll keep doing what I do, um, and we'll go from there. You know, if you guys have any other advice or any other tips you can think of, if you, you know, let me know. I'm I'm curious to know in the comments if you guys have been a part of a successful campaign or if you've been part of a failing one like me, man. I mean, it would be be good to kind of see what other lessons you learn because I will tell you you can learn a lot of lessons from being successful but there's also a ton of stuff to learn from when you fail so it would be interesting to know what other people think all right thanks guys see you in the the next video